Hi friends, welcome to lecture 59 of my helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to talk about the high and low frequency mode. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So recall from our previous lecture that the eigenvalue S in the non-rotating frame is related to the eigenvalue in the rotating frame by this equation. So S was SR plus IN or minus IN. And the plus IN corresponds to the high frequency mode and the minus IN corresponds to the low frequency mode. So for this particular equation, we can write beta and C by beta and S is I, and that is equal to E to the power I pi by two. Now you recall that this relation can be shown to be veracious by using the de Moivre's theorem, that is E i theta is sine theta plus i cos theta. So we are going to use these two equations in our next slide. So let's start with the equation for beta and c. Now beta and c can be expressed in terms of e to the power s psi, which in then can be expressed as e to the power sr plus i n psi. Similarly, beta n s could be expressed in terms of beta n s e to the power sr plus i n psi in exactly this manner. And now by using this relationship between beta n c and beta n s, I can write this term in terms of beta n c. So beta n s would be beta n c by e i pi by two, so I substitute that here, and so this negative pi by two i goes into this equation here or this expression here, and therefore I get a relationship between beta n s and beta n c. Now here we clearly see that beta n c leads beta n s by pi by two. So the frequency for oscillation of this mode is going to be the imaginary part of SR, so I'm going to call this sometime as just im SR plus n. So here the mode beta n c leads beta n s pi pi by 2 resulting in a progressive mode, progressive because there is a lead here. Now let's consider a four bladed rotor. Now we know for a four blade n equals 1 and let's take an articulated rotor. Now, this plays an important role here, whether the rotor has articulated or hingeless type, because it will determine what is the value of this imaginary part here. Now, for such a rotor, the im SR is going to be slightly less than one. In fact, we calculated previously a value like 0.87. So you are going to get 0.87 plus one, and so that is the frequency of the progressive mode. So that's a high frequency progressive mode. Now let's turn to the second side, which is more complicated, and that's the low frequency mode. So for the low frequency mode, the non-rotating value is related to the rotating value using this equation. So S is SR minus IN. So essentially, we can now write the eigenvector corresponding to this mode as beta and C by beta NS is minus I, so we can write it as e to the power minus i pi by 2. Now, just as before, the equations can be written. So we can write the beta and c equation, write that. And here I am directly using the fact that s is sr minus i n for this case. And then I can write this equation beta n s in the same form. And if I put beta and c here, what would happen is that I would get a plus i pi by 2 here. So this case has two possibilities. It all depends on how the imaginary part of SR relates to N. So let's first consider case one, that is im SR is less than N. In that case, beta N S I can be written using this equation here. And what we can see is that beta N C leads beta N S by 90 degrees 
and this is also a progressive mode. Now, just to give some numbers to this whole problem, let us take a four bladed rotor, articulated rotor here, and so we know n would be one. We also know that for such a rotor, the imaginary part of SR would be less than one per rev. For example, we had calculated 0.87. So one minus this 0.87 would be a small positive number. And therefore, beta 1c leads beta 1s by 90 degree. And the frequency of this mode is, of course, a small positive number. That's why it is called a low frequency mode. Now, there is a second case which is possible here if the im SR value is greater than 1. Now, this is a situation which can happen in a hingeless rotor. So, we are going to look at that. Essentially, the new beta value has to be higher, like 1.12 per rev or something like that, and then you will get this case. So, again, we write the equation beta ns in terms of beta nc, and now you see this is the form of this equation. So here beta nc lags beta ns by 90 degrees and this results in a regressive mode. So it will become clear why we use the word regressive mode here. Let's consider a four bladed rotor again. So n is one, but now the rotor is hingeless. Therefore the im sr value is greater than one per rev. So remember it totally is going to depend on this value of new beta here. And now the value of new beta may be something like 1.12 per rev, okay? So we are going to get this value as now a small positive number. So the situation is flipped from what it was previously. And therefore, beta 1c lags beta 1s by 90 degree, resulting in a regressive mode. So we'll show this in a figure next. And this figure is for a three-bladed rotor. For a rotating frame, all eigenvalues are complex conjugates. They are all co-located. When a non-rotating frame, two of these are same as for a rotating frame, and the remaining two represent the high and low frequency modes. So let's look at the hover case rotating frame. So here we have plotted the real part and the imaginary part. So here, for example, these all would be here and here. So again, on the plus and minus side. And um, this diagram is not to scale, but just to express the fact that all these roots are co-located. They're located at the same place. And of course, this is well damped. So this is well into the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, that means the real part of S is negative. So it's a well damped system. Now, some of you are familiar. This is a root locus type of diagram. Now, what happens in the non-rotating frame is that some of these remain in the same location and the remaining ones get shifted. So you get the high frequency mode, you get the low frequency mode, the collective mode remains somewhere around one here. Okay. So this is the approximate type of diagram which you get in the non-rotating frame. And again, the important thing is that the real part remains well damped. It's well onto the left-hand side of the axis here. So we know this is a stable zone okay, in a typical root locus type of plot. So why did we go through this entire exercise? Well, it helps to explain some of the phenomena where the body and the rotor couples, which result in phenomena such as air resonance and ground resonance. So there we need to derive equations for the body. And essentially what is done is that the rotor equations are converted to the non-rotating frame and then coupled with the body equations. And then the stability of the system is looked at. So of course, this was for a specific case, the blade flapping equation. In the next lecture, I'm going to look at the generalized equation of the form mq double dot plus cq dot plus kq equals zero, where m, c, k are going to be matrices. And then we are going to look at the constant coefficient system. So constant coefficient means that m, c, k are essentially constants like we handle today. They are constant coefficient equations. They are not periodic. 
if they are periodic we need to use some theory of periodic differential equations which is based on Floquet theory which we are going to discuss later in the course but first we are going to discuss constant coefficient systems in the next lecture see you then